Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for staying with us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. In 2016, there were about 216 million cases of malaria across 91 countries, an increase of 5 million cases over 2015. Also in 2016, the WHO Africa region bore 90% of the global malaria burden and 91% of the malaria deaths. But deaths from malaria were slightly less in 2016 than in 2015. Malaria could be life-threatening, especially in children under the age of five. Fever, headache, and chills are usually the first symptoms. Now, 3.2 billion people live in areas at risk of malaria transmission in 106 countries and territories all around the world. It's the third leading cause of death in children under five years globally, after pneumonia and diarrhea according to a malaria fact sheet released by the American Embassy in 2011. My guest on the show today is a specialist in malaria. He's a medical parasitologist at the uh, College of Medicine, Unilag. This is Professor Wellington Oibo. Thank you very much. Mary. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, this is the first question on my mind. First of all, we hear things are getting better. The malaria outlook is, look, it, is better. And then we now hear that there were more cases in 2016. I cannot reconcile it. Please explain to us. Yeah, thank you very much, and a, and a pleasure to be here in Health Matters. We actually would need local data. We have the global data from WHO. Uh, but what we can see here in the country, we have a, a picture, uh, of course, that we are trying to reconfigure in terms of where we are right now with malaria um, from 2015, 2016. Um, but the data we have in country shows that the malaria rates, even among children, asymptomatic children in the community uh, between 2010 and 2015 has reduced from 42% to 27%. What do you mean by asymptomatic children? For they children, have malaria, it doesn't show? Uh, yes, amongst children who do not have malaria. Okay. And the survey was done among those children, because that's the protocol to do it in children less than five years. And from that data, really, it shows that there is a reduction in malaria. Of course, from that same WHO in report Nigeria. in Nigeria. From that WHO report, because of paucity of data, data that are scattered in many ways, uh, we still have 61 million uh, people still being described to have had malaria in 2016. Okay. But what I can say here in this program, the epidemiology of malaria is changing. Uh, there's reduction in uh, the prevalence of malaria. However, within the community and within our population, we still feel that every fever is malaria. So malaria still remains the target, still remains the disease people say they have, um, whereas they do not have it. Okay. Let's take this step by step now. You say there's, there's an improvement. First of all, what parameters caused this improvement? What did we do right? Thank you. So there, there are quite a number of factors. You know, malaria as a disease exists within the environment. And in the environment, you have human beings as well. The environment promotes the breeding of mosquitoes, the female Anopheles mosquitoes that will help the transmission. And of course, you have the people and you have the surrounding environment, people's behavior, how they expose themselves or what they choose to do or not do. But in the past 10 years, we've seen quite a huge global focus in terms of funding um, on malaria. And we have seen uh, the huge deployments uh, which we have known to, noticed too from the net campaigns, uh, the, the, the campaign, the distribution of long-lasting insects that treated nets has moved quite a lot in the past five uh, to eight years and through global funds and other partnerships. And we've seen now the acceptance to a very long, a large extent of the use of the recommended malaria medicine. Okay. which is the artemisinin combination, combination therapy. Yes, in 20, uh, 2002, 2005, the policy was changed from the use of chloroquine and, and, and sulfadoxin paramecimine to ACT. But now there's far more use. It means that if you're using the effective medicines 
for malaria. You're, you're likely going to reduce transmission on its own. So these things are helping a lot? They are helping. But again, there are still other factors. We have climate change. What are the drivers? How many people are using the nets? Should we okay. have attained more or not? <laughs> so, let's hold on. Yeah. Let's hold on, on that first. Now, you, you were speaking about people treating all fevers as malaria. Yeah. But there's been so much talk about the diagnostic test in the last few years that I would have expected that, you know, most people are being tested before treating, mm -hmm. treatment. Yeah. But is it that some of these tests are false positives, they are not working, or people don't know how to use them? Yes, so, well, you know, again, uh, we still have these old habits that is difficult to change, even among the healthcare workers. Uh, in yeah. Africa, most part of Africa, our health system is very weak. And therefore, because the healthcare worker want to save life, there's what we call syndromic management of illnesses. Which means when I see the fever, when you see I the see the symptoms, so yeah, you, you treat it because you do something, yes. And because there has been, in some facilities, you may not have a, a, maybe a laboratory, or if you have a laboratory, it's not functional uh, to help with the diagnosis. So you use the symptoms. So for a long time, the symptoms of malaria, which you rightly described, with the fevers, the headache, and all of this, could still be for every other, quite a lot of conditions. Okay. And people are coming from somewhere where it was true that if you use those symptoms as a healthcare worker uh, 20 years ago, you're likely going to be right. But now, because of the changes, you're not likely going to be right anymore because fever could be caused by quite a lot of conditions. So, but the health worker, then to the people in the community, still do not believe that, oh, why should I do a test? Okay. For Probably typhoid, because they are thinking about the money? Uh, it may be, I think it's for more information because the Global Fund has made malaria diagnosis free okay. in, in public health oh, facilities. Free, not cheap. No, no, free. Yeah, in public health facilities okay. because they are you know, provide, donating these commodities. Okay. And even where they are going to be paid for, it is quite cheap. Okay. But you know it's a mindset thing. The mindset directs an individual that they go to the hospital and say, I have malaria, even that's while in the that's hospital. That's what people do. Yes. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's good to speak to uh, where these rapid diagnostic tests, you know, where they are coming into. That even in advanced countries where they have strong health system, the effects and the impact of science and technology in healthcare.